channel again and thank you once again Penny for your question. So what I'm going to do today is uh, break down a few things that I look for when I do my morning walk with my orchids. Um, basically I have here my maintenance tray and I have my alcohol, my two clippers based on what needs to be chopped off if anything, my trusty taint paintbrush, I was going to say toothbrush again, my trusty taint again? I'm not going to edit this out. My trusty tooth. Are you serious? My trusty paintbrush. No joke. That was not made up. That actually happened. So <laughs> I have my paintbrush and I have some kitchen paper because between cuts, remember I said, you know, wipe down the blade, spray alcohol. It gets you through the process of operation faster. And I have my cinnamon for any and every cut that I make. And, uh, well, after that marvelously garbled intro, let's go and have a look around. So first up, I noticed this morning on my walk around, it's something I do every day. I enjoy my blooms, but there's also some spent blooms. So if they fall off that easily, this one, you know, you, when you take them off, if they come off in your hand very easily, then take them off it makes everything look much nicer and the distortion is gonna go nuts in this video because I'm moving things around I'm trying to work slowly but you get the point these blooms are coming off very very easily and that's what I do in the mornings if I have blooming orchids I go check them out and I clean them up and at the same time I look around and see if there's anything else happening pest wise. This is my sad little anosmum, not doing much, doesn't know what to do yet. I'm not remossing, that's not part of my maintenance today because I want to see a new growth. But I just wanted to demonstrate that leaves can look dead, they're translucent, they've wilted, but they're still very firm attached to the plant. So don't take it off. If you take that off, you could create a wound, an opening, make it prone to infection. We don't need that. So leaves like that, that don't just fall off into your hand easily, leave them on and don't worry about cutting them off. When it falls off, it has created and calloused its, uh, its area of breakage. So no harm done. And here on my Vanda Denisoniana dark chocolate star, we have a spike that it's past its prime. We also have a second spike, but that is not looking so nice anymore. And for aesthetic purposes, we cut the spike off. I'm gonna try and do this one-handed on camera. See where we get to. Now, I'll just do this for demonstration purposes because I will go afterwards and make that spike even shorter and get it right into the axis but I can't do that with one hand pretty but then after any cut anything open wounded I have my paintbrush which I soaked with alcohol and just to have the cinnamon stick onto my paintbrush I apply a little bit of cinnamon to help it dry out you don't want to get cinnamon on roots. Try to avoid it as best as possible. And then the cinnamon will dry out any cut, any wound, and avoid any kind of bacteria or infection from developing. A quick show and tell. After I had both my hands clear, I went in deeper. Just for aesthetic purposes, I cut the um, van der Spike off a little bit more further down into the crevice of the leaf and um, put cinnamon onto that cut and that will dry out nicely. And because we've just used these clippers to make a cut, we're going to spray them with alcohol, both sides, because while we go around looking for other things, these can evaporate and get sterilized and they're ready to go for the next cut. 
here's my stanhopia, and just as an example of a leaf that is dying back, it's not doing any harm. This is normal. I'm just showing this as an example because I don't want to cut this leaf off. Right now there are no wounds. It's not an infection. This is just the normal form of how a stanhopia and other orchids will grow. They will lose their old leaves, as you can see here at the joint. They will just fall off by themselves. And all this has as yet to go yellow and dry up. And then I can pop the leaf off quite easily and it has made its own natural callus. So there's no infection or anything going in there. So if you see leaves like this, if it's one of the older bulbs, which you will know because you've grown the plant, don't worry about it, it's dry. It's doing its thing, that's normal. This is my rainbow forest, my little neo Phoenicia rainbow forest, or Vanda. And I just wanted to show you some blemishes on the leaves that are quite normal. This is not a pest. These are freckles from sunlight. And this is just a sign that the orchid is getting enough light and that I need to be on the lookout for putting it more into a shadier spot on sunny days. It's a cloudy day today, so it hangs outside exposed. But this is a signal for me to make sure to watch out that this does not get any darker. Likewise, from an observation point of view, this is my Lucneri, and I wanted to show you it has freckles on the leaves, which is not a problem, as you saw on the other one, but this is a problem. This leaf is not burnt yet. If I keep it in this position and it gets the hot afternoon sun, this leaf will burn to a crisp. So this is a sure sign of too much light. It stresses the orchid. You got to remove it and take it into a shadier spot. Another better example, as far as I'm concerned regarding what to look out for on leaves, is how they die back. Do they die back from the tip towards the stem? or from the stem get yellow and dry up and fall off before the tip goes green. So this is okay. It's drying up and dying back from the end to the, towards the stem. It's an old leaf. It's done its duty. It's time to go. I do not cut it off. Again, I don't want to create an unnecessary wound. Eventually it will just die back right there by the seam that will callus over naturally and the leaf will fall off. It's aesthetical only, but it's better for the orchid to leave it on. This blemish here is a sunburn. This is a classic sign of sunburn because it's not spreading or anything like that. It's fine, it can stay. So do you see these two candidates here? This, I do not know what is going on. I don't like it and I'm going to intervene. You can see that this is a Vanda leaf that is not at the bottom of the plant. It is not an old leaf, but it's doing weird things at the tip and only these two leaves. The next leaf up is clean. As you can see down here, I've already cut one off, thinking I was stopping whatever what was going on. There's like a little fungus or bacteria infection in there. It didn't help. So I'm going to do it again with both of them. Now you see the light yellow above here. That is, the bacteria is already in that space. So make sure if you have anything like this and you want to cut it off, that you go far back up, deep enough into the green tissue where there should be healthy tissue. So we'll be monitoring that as well because these two will be cut off at this point. You can make it look pretty by cutting it into the shape of a leaf, if you wish. And I'm going to do one cut with, and then with, treat it with cinnamon. And then we'll see the other cut afterwards as well, because I have to sterilize my clippers. And I'm on doing this with one hand. So let's go far back, far enough back. I know this looks exaggerated, but this is exactly what needs to be done to get as far back of the cut as possible. All right, let me just grab the cinnamon. Okay, I'm back with the cinnamon now. And because this is my orchid cinnamon, in this case, I'm just going to lower the leaf in 
and really dunk it into that cinnamon so that the entire cut is coated. Sorry, I'm looking at what I'm doing and not what the camera is seeing, so I hope you can see that. There you go. That cut is good and coated now. So here they are, both cut back, both coated in cinnamon. And I hope it stops. It's not doing it on any other leaves. All the other leaf tips are fine. And bonus, we're going to get some blooms. This is lavender mist. So because of the yellow edging, I'm not comfortable. Sorry about the background noise. I'm not comfortable with the yellow edging because that is almost like a bacterial infection. That's why I cut them off. Very different to the Van der Donosoniana that we saw before, where the tip was just drying out gradually, gradually. As an example, here is a maxillaria type, also with like pseudobulbs and leaves that are easy to identify. This leaf is dying back from the tip down, but it's still green down here. I'm going to leave it. I'm not going to rip that off. It will callus over on its own. However, and I hope I can reach, back here is a leaf that looks, it's almost dead, but it's not coming off easily. I'm tugging quite hard. It's not coming off. I'm going to leave it. Here's another one. Whoop, that came off in my hand super easy. So that is what you want. Something that comes off really easy. That means the orchid itself has colored over that wound and no infection can enter. Let's have a look at this one. Well, this one was off already. I just needed to pick it out of the plant. Perfect. We have one more. Nope, that's still stuck. So when you leave them and they come off easy like that, that's the time to get rid of them. Here's another small example of a Brassolalio cattleya. Individual pseudobulbs with leaves coming out at the top. There you can see the transition. That is what needs to callus over in order to remove a leaf without damaging the pseudobulb. Now, I don't know about this one, but I've left it for days hoping that... The there you go. Hoping that this would happen in the video. And it did, yay. So that's how you know it's okay to take off an old leaf from a cattleya or anything that has like a pseudobulb and then a leaf or two leaves coming out the top. Now you see the brown stuff here? That's not an infection, that's just it drying off. It's a very old bulb, it's right at the end of the plant. Everything else that's important and new is healthy and growing well. So there you go, all calloused over, all dry. Well, that worked well. And I just want to point out something that can happen or happens all the time. You see that you have uh, these beautiful Oncidium intergeneric types in the supermarket or in your big box store, you know, when, if you go to Lowe's or Home Depot. You get these Oncidiums there and, excuse me, we're getting photobombed, and, and they come with the leaves all nice. However, in cultivation many times, they will just get spotty and start drying back. And yes, I could cut this down now, this leaf, but I'm not going to, just like with the ones in the back. They're fine. They're still green on them on the bottom. That's still photosynthesizing, still doing its work. For aesthetic purposes, of course, you would say, oh, I don't like the look of it. Yeah, well, you know, I look at it from the point of view of, is it doing the plant any harm? No. If I cut into the plant, can I then cause harm? Yes. So I'll take the former. It's not doing the plant any harm. It can stay. So after doing my rounds for this day, just to have a look and check out some of the leaves I've been waiting on, this is what we've got out of it. We got the Vanda spike, some blooms from the Berioda, and we went to that cat layer. We saw that one just pop off. That's exactly how we want it when we remove old leaves. I went through the maxillaria. I didn't want to show that again. I had the maxillaria on, on up close and personal recently. And then we had a little bit of a bacterial infection 
on a big veranda and again watch out for the yellow here and as this is not dry remember the dry on the other leaves I've said look this is not dry so off with it off with its head so yes this is what I then sometimes get left with and of course what do we do or what do I do after every cut every treatment I sterilize and I let it evaporate so I hope that this gave you some insight and that it was somewhat useful thank you very much for watching oh one final thing I sterilize the tray too afterwards but that's a simple spray with alcohol and a wipe down so thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time take care bye